Hello and welcome to the Talking Food with Bid Food podcast. I'm Jay Anglis and on the menu for this episode we'll be talking about the importance of sustainability. More specifically we're going to be talking about the importance of reducing carbon emissions for businesses in the food and drink industry and practical ways that businesses can get started. As a whole we've seen environmental concerns significantly rise in importance for consumers and our customers over the last few years, particularly whenever we do our research for our annual food and drink trends reports. At BidFood, we're on an exciting sustainability journey ourselves after recently launching a new environmental, social and governance policy to support our customers. With that in mind, we thought now would be a great time to get the thoughts of experts on this topic to discover ways in which you can implement new ideas that can make a difference for supporting your strategies and goals. So without any further delay, let's get talking to our guests. To discuss this topic with me, I'm really excited to be joined by two fantastic guests who have a fountain of knowledge on this subject. My first guest has been a constant pillar of support for the hospitality industry, working tirelessly through lobbying our government and representing the industry at every opportunity. I'm of course talking about the Chief Executive of UK Hospitality, Kate Nichols, OBE. Welcome to the podcast, Kate. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here with you. So Kate, how would you put into words what you do for the industry? Well, I I think we are there to be the voice and the face of the sector, both employers and businesses within the hospitality community. And by hospitality, we take a very broad approach to it. It's it's eating and drinking out, it's accommodation, it's entertainment, it's contract catering and events. Uh, And our role really is, is to promote the sector as a great place to grow, work and invest. It's to make sure we have a supportive regulatory and fiscal environment within which businesses can thrive. And it's about providing great insight, intelligence, advice and guidance for businesses uh, to to respond to the challenges, particularly around ESG and areas like that, but also around um, uh, ways in which that they can grow, they can develop their business and they can innovate. That's great. Um, The industry is very lucky to have someone so passionate working for it. So thank you. Uh, Moving on to our next guest. Joining us now is Kristen Phyllis, who is a director for the Zero Carbon Forum. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Joe. It's good to be here. No problem at all. So later in the episode, we're going to go through exactly what the Zero Carbon Forum is. But before that, can you share with our listeners a little bit about your background and what led you to where you are now? Absolutely. So, uh, so I've been, my background is actually in corporate tech, uh, where I worked for eBay for nine years and across various other tech companies in decarbonizing that industry uh, before actually going freelance and consulting across supply chain logistics, human rights, various other elements. Uh, I think one thing became really clear in all of that in that net zero is the most important space we can be in. It crosses every industry and food systems in particular play a huge role in our net zero transition as an economy, as well as our lives and culture. So it's kind of how I've moved into the hospitality side of things. Had the opportunity to help start up the forum last year with Mark Chapman, our CEO, and have just kind of gone from there in terms of launching our, our roadmap to net zero last year and now working with individual operators to get to net zero faster. So I'll now bring us back onto the topic for this episode, which is around reducing carbon emissions across our industry. So Kate, I'll start with you. Why do you think that businesses should be focusing on reducing carbon right now? Well, I think sustainability has been a key topic that businesses have been looking at for for quite a few number of years. And carbon net zero is right at the sharp end of that. So clearly there is the legislative driver that the government's agenda is looking at ensuring that businesses focus and prioritise carbon net zero. uh, And that's certainly a driving point. But I think coming out of the pandemic and the situation that we're facing now, we've gone from the pandemic crisis into an energy and inflation and cost of living crisis, into a war in Ukraine and and, uh, food and uh, energy supply chain crisis, really brings into sharp focus why it's important economically and operationally and commercially to look at carbon net zero, not just from the political, it's the right thing to do or because we're being told to do it legally, but actually now there's a real business imperative towards looking at that because if we're looking at longer term resilience and recovery in the hospitality sector and the food supply chain, then we do need to make sure that we've got really robust energy supply. There's an ever greater need at a time of, of rising prices 
and a squeeze on margins to make sure that we've we've got a competitive prices, that you've got sustainable energy supply, sustainable in the, 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 the broadest sense of the word. Um, and that means investing in green solutions and in carbon net zero solutions. And then there's two other areas where now is the right time to be looking at this from a business perspective. Post pandemic, we're looking at attracting back uh, customers and we are still pre pandemic um, we're below pre-pandemic levels of footfall um, and we haven't got all of our customer demand back. So we are still probably about 80, 85 percent of, of pre-pandemic footfall levels. So there is still a shortfall that we're looking at get, moving forward. And obviously, the big gap is our business travel and our international tourism uh, uh, visitors coming through. So for, from a customer point of view, making sure you've got a, a good ESG message is, is positive. Carbon Net Zero will help to make sure that, that we've got um, the most sustainable product, tourism product. There's not much we can do as an island about international visitors coming over, but we can make sure that we've got a really robust message there. And then finally, the, the other big challenge that we've got post-pandemic is workers and uh, attracting people back into the sector is a great place to work. And it's undoubtedly the case with 60% of our workforce under 30 that solid ESG credentials um, and a, a meaningful set of, of carbon net zero credentials are important in attracting that workforce of the future. That's really great. And where does uh, climate change and sustainability sit within UK hospitality's vision and strategy? And how are you turning this into support for your members? Um, right at the heart of our strategy, actually, as we're coming out of COVID, clearly we, we're only four years old as an organisation. We, we merged four years ago and we had a sort of two year period where we were building up the profile of the sector. And we were very much talking about uh, the sector in terms of economic, cultural and social contribution to UK PLC. And we were looking very much around regulation and the tax environment. Coming out of COVID post pandemic, if we're looking at how we build back resilience into the sector, it's about making sure that ESG is at the heart of everything we do, not just as individual companies, but us as the trade body being the voice and face of the sector. I always say that, you know, hospitality and tourism, 70% SMEs, we don't have an employer brand um, that, that is strong enough to stand on its own, unlike retail, where you can move forward with the big supermarkets. It falls upon the trade body to be that employer brand. And therefore, we need to make sure that we've got ESG at the heart of what we do. So it is the full pillar of what we we do as, as uh, for the sector we are there to promote the industry's reputation to set out the policies and crucially for those smaller businesses to do the heavy lifting where can we get the learnings the leverage from our major companies our international businesses that have the resources to put in place these sustainability strategies the carbon net zero strategies and how can we translate that down to the smallest so that everybody can play their part. Because I think it's often overwhelming when it comes to carbon net zero in particular, um, as to what can businesses do and small businesses often get overwhelmed. Our job is to set out the small practical steps with, by which they can in, engage so that collectively for the sector as a whole, we, we address the carbon net zero targets that we've set ourselves and we all play our part in contributing towards it because we're not going to get to carbon net zero unless we all work together. So you need a rising tide lifting all boats um, and that's the, the work that we're doing. So the flagship element of our strategy is our sustainability sustainability guide which we've produced which has those tips and tricks simple resources to enable them to dedicate their resources to the sustainability agenda um, work out how to eat the elephant in bite-sized chunks um, and learn from from the sort of collective wisdom um, and buy into the collective wisdom about how to do this um, uh, and use their carbon calculator so both of those strategies are going to be launched later this summer um, and the Carbon Net Zero Forum has been our, our sort of blue sky thinking generator to be able to identify some of the great ideas that people can buy into, as well as collective energy purchasing to get a, a greener set of energy credentials going through. So our job is really to, to, to bring everybody on the journey, find a way through that everybody can play their part. And then collectively, we can make a huge difference given the footprint that hospitality has. That's really great. Thank you, Kate. And uh, Kristen, can you tell us a bit about the Zero Carbon Forum and why it was set up and how it helps businesses in our industry? 
Absolutely, yeah. So, um, so the Zero Carbon Forum, it's been just over a year and a half since we started. And I think the big driving force behind it was um, our CEO was working at the time uh, with a number of individual hospitality businesses on some of the big challenges that, that really are shared amongst us. And there, we came to this realization really that about 80% of the challenges facing the industry are shared. And it really doesn't make sense for a hundred businesses to be doing the same thing a hundred times over. It'll take us a hundred times the amount of time to get there. So there's a huge benefit to be had by collaborating. And uh, so the Zero Carbon Forum was created to create a non-competitive collaborative space for hospitality or organ operations, um, which they we break them down into restaurants, quick service restaurants, uh, pubs, hotels, breweries, and now we've broadened as well to contract caterers, amusement and entertainment, as well as nightclubs. So we've got multiple subsector profiles that we launched last year. So we worked with our members, which represent some of the initially largest players. And now we're also representing smaller businesses, which have a lot to bring to the table as well to move the whole sector forward. Uh, and we've launched this roadmap to net zero, which really breaks down aggregate footprint data for each subsector of hospitality and the things that we can already start doing now and their contributions to getting us to a net zero net zero goal. So we kind of say what we do is broken down into four areas. So each member gets an individual climate action plan, which breaks down your, your operations and what you can do as a business to get to net zero based on what you've done in the past, what your footprint looks like, where your hotspots are. We then work in terms of where we can collaborate as an industry to accelerate future technology, to create economies of scale, to jointly solution some of the more difficult parts of getting there, and to, to kind of demystify parts of the greenhouse gas protocol, how they apply to us, how we take into consideration accountability for things like guest travel or things that aren't so a little bit grayer for our, our sector and what it means for us. Um, it's a really important point that we need to be speaking the same language, we need to be measuring things in the same way, and we really do need to be aligning on the, the targets and the timelines that, that are going to get us there. Um, there's also the, the partnerships that we have with UKH and with BBPA as well, the British Beer and Pub Association, to ultimately um, lobby government for the right regulatory framework to really make this not only possible, but I mean economically feasible at a price point and uh, you know with the right incentives in place to, to drive action, and then where we can jointly lobby our supply chain and um, and really influence beyond the sphere of just what we do. So I think it's a it's an incredibly powerful space, not only because hospitality touches literally everything. It's everything from our regenerative agriculture, farming practices, partnerships with UK, UK farmers unions and UK dairy, uh, all the way through to customer choice, menu mix, packaging, supply chain, logistics, transportation, it's everything. So it's, it's a huge industry with, with a huge impact, but also a really exciting opportunity to drive some, some really meaningful change. And when you get uh, businesses in a room who are under every other circumstance competitors, sitting in a room and recognizing that the climate crisis and all of the economic implications behind it as well, in terms of just the resilience of our businesses. This is a non-competitive space. It's an area where we, we can't afford to compete and we need to work together. And that recognition is really it's exciting and it's, it's humbling um, that we, we get everyone in the room just really working towards this with a lot of passion, a lot of drive, um, and a lot of great things in store for where we're headed. That's great. Yeah, it's really exciting to see it's all starting to come together as well. Um, and then also together, you've been working on a, a bold commitment to inform hospitality businesses on the actions needed to achieve net zero by 2040 through the Net Zero Forum. From your perspective, Kate, what led UK hospitality to getting involved in this? Well, I think it's what Kristen's just said. It's that realisation that individual companies, however big they are, and even the biggest in our sector are not huge in, in, in sort of uh, economic and industrial terms, however big you are, you can't solve this on your own. I think, you know, about three quarters of um, our carbon emissions are in our supply chain. They're in our built environment. They're in our, what happens to our customers. We can't control what's happening there. So we need to work collaboratively and collectively. And really that was building on um, the, the observations that we'd had during the early days of COVID, where again, in order to, to solve some of the problems and the challenges we were facing, the industry needed to work collaboratively together. So it was taking and building on the best of things that came out of the worst of times in order to solve those common problems and, and solutions. And and also it was it was seeing and hearing from so many members the smaller members in particular who just didn't know where to start and were so so overwhelmed by the, this challenge knowing that they needed to do it because of their customers and, and their, their 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 employees but so overwhelmed by the challenge that they didn't know where to start and therefore were putting it off 
I'm just leaving it to somebody else. And, and it's the realization that somebody else isn't going to solve it. We need to work together to do it. And we are the only vehicle that can bring together all of those parts of the supply chain because we represent the breadth of hospitality, all of those businesses, 700 companies, 100,000 outlets. But we also have suppliers within membership as well who can come and bring their professional expertise and their supply chain expertise to help us deliver a better solution for our planet and our environment. Um, and, and so there's that operational and commercial imperative, the moral imperative, and also responding back to government to show that the hospitality sector a sector that they'd helped quite considerably through the pandemic could also be a force for good in helping them to deliver in the challenges that they had set themselves collectively and socially uh, and that our businesses had an important role to play. That's great and you mentioned about making things a little bit easier and I saw Kristen that you uh, at the Zero Carbon Forum you've been developing a carbon calculator to help businesses calculate and understand their carbon emissions and show practical ways you can reduce them what kind of inspired you to do this and who what types of business can benefit from this so to Kate's point I think we need to to get to the belief and to the point where this is an accessible area for everyone all sizes and all types of hospitality operators and I think what we realized through our first year of operation as well is that there was this kind of barrier for small to medium businesses in particular to feel like they can contribute meaningfully, like they can be a part of the entire industry moving there, where actually that's that's a huge part of, of us working together and getting the whole sector there and having no one left behind. Uh, there is a really quickly changing landscape and it's in everyone's best interest to, to have an accessible way just to understand that baseline and start taking actions. So we initially started designing it with the intention of smaller to medium sized businesses who might not have the resource or the data quality in place or the supplier relationships where they can really go in and get a really in-depth footprint because actually what we find is we already know what the hot spots are and they're pretty much shared across our subsectors in the industry and just getting the exact numbers of carbon for each each one of your products shouldn't be a barrier to starting to take action so what we've developed is with the industry knowledge that we have across our forum members as well as the latest climate science it's greenhouse gas protocol aligned um, as well as aligned with the the data that we have um, and and standardized emission factors that are for the uk uh, we've created the calculator to ultimately give all businesses an idea of what their footprint is going to be and to track year over year progress and understand what kind of actions they can start taking. So I think the first step to that was the hospitality roadmap last year, which really broke that down into waterfall charts of the contributions from our members data. And now the next step is that there's no barrier uh, in terms of cost. Um, it's fully available to the sector that anyone can go in and start putting in whatever you've got in terms of data, we can give you a footprint for it. So if you've just got your energy consumption, if you've got spend data for your purchase goods and services, you might not have volume yet, you might not have you know, everything, but whatever you've got, we can give you a footprint and we can give you recommendations to maybe collect data in a different way next time. Uh, and more importantly, actions you can start taking to, to target that before you know, you actually get into the, the nitty gritty of the data. It's not always completely necessary. So um, I think we've targeted initially small to medium sized businesses. We've got some larger ones that are using it now as well. Um, if you're relatively homogenous as a business in terms of if you do just pubs or just restaurants, um, it's really very accurate. Um, again, it's based on uh, kind of average factors. So if you put in how much you've spent on beef, for example, it's gonna use UK averages um, as a starting point around where beef comes from, where it's sourced from, and the relative emissions around that. Um, if you actually have supplier specific data from where your beef comes from and you're taking some actions, we can work with that as well and reflect what you're doing. So it basically creates a no barrier entry point to start getting in there, understanding your hotspots and taking action. You can track your progress, you can track your different hotspots and break it down into little charts um, on where you, you focus your efforts. So um, for our larger members who have already done an in-depth footprint, we are encouraging them to use it with their least intended estate as well, just to start getting an idea, a more specific idea, uh, instead of just a lot of times we'll take the managed estate and just kind of assume the same operations across the tenanted estate. Uh, the calculator allows us to get an actual footprint for each one of those, those outlets and operations and um, have a better idea of where we stand. Have you got any examples so far of businesses that have trialed it and seen results or benefits from utilizing it? Yeah, so we've had um, we've had over 100 businesses who have gone in to complete a footprint with the calculator so far, which is good. It's just over a month since we've put it out there. Um, and we've got a number of our larger members who are starting to distribute it. And as part of their supplier, their tenanted estate engagement strategy are starting to, to 
get some people onboarded, which is great. So in terms of the actions, I think the biggest thing is just kind of knowing where you stand and knowing which part of your emissions are coming from your energy, what kind of savings you could find both in carbon and costs around your switching to a renewable tariff. Energy is obviously very, very topical now. Um, or you're purchasing, you're sourcing, things like that. So it's just kind of getting that out there. So um, we can't necessarily say, I guess, progress yet. It'll be an annual thing. So everyone will do their footprint once, get the actions. They can connect with any of us at the forum or across the services arm uh, and then check back in next year where we hope to have some really great stories uh, across both our forum membership and uh, broader hospitality using the calculator in terms of what they've been able to achieve and how we can do even more with the tool. We'll continue to evolve it as we go. That's great. And it's really encouraging to see. So um, moving on, uh, Kate, apart from the work we've discussed in this episode, are there any other practical tips that UK hospitality are sharing on how businesses can reduce their emissions and address their impact on the climate? Yes, I mean, we've just touched on carbon net zero in, in this, but we have a whole ESG strategy that sits alongside it that deals with that broader element. And I think it's worthwhile saying as well that for the S, uh, we look at workforce as well, because we're, people are that heart of our business. If we are going to have sustainable businesses, we need to look after our people and we need to make sure that they are um, invested in as well. So we do have a whole workforce strategy that sits alongside it. But we've got our, our carbon calculator so people can, can measure. You can't start to take action unless you measure. You've got the sustainability strategy and guide that comes through our sustainability forum that gives a platform for sharing best practice on all of these issues. And when we look at ESG, we've got practical tips uh, and good practice case studies on things like waste, skills, food management, food supply chain, biodiversity, all of those kind of areas. And the one key component that we've heard from businesses time and time again is the importance of engaging their staff in understanding the work that they're doing in these areas and being able to communicate it effectively to the customers um, and make sure that sustainability is at the heart of what we're trying to do in terms of business resilience and business recovery. So engaging those staff critical Staff can then help to develop creative solutions. And, and we found that that's come through time and time again. And also, it's just the little things. It's the tiny examples that people come across. One of our forum members uh, is Revolution, who was looking at their, their footprint. And it, it's about passion fruit um, garnishes in the porn star martini and how you can improve both your margin, but also your carbon footprint by tackling that. And it's those kind of clever tips and tricks that we want to share and our, our website has a full platform on all of those kind of issues ranging across the environmental, the sustainable, the governance and the workforce that can help improve business profitability, viability and then build resilience across the sector as a whole. I guess with skill shortages as well in the industry, these types of things make it so much easier if you are struggling for that in that sort of area as well. Absolutely. It's about being able to communicate that, that, you know, we are good corporate citizens collectively and individually. And for small businesses, that can be a challenge to be able to put that together. But it is increasingly important when you are looking to recruit people and you've got labour shortages and skills shortages. Being able to have a compelling narrative around ESG is, is super important. Um, and carbon net zero is, is quite high on the agenda of many of those people. And we are increasingly seeing, particularly with Gen Z and, and Gen A, it is that, um, you know, they look at the employer credentials before they make a decision as to where to go. So having that strong narrative and if we can help people have that narrative um, uh, front of mind when they're doing staff recruitment and training, then firstly, we should be able to retain more staff into the sector because they see us as being uh, having good values that are aligned to theirs. And then it will make us easier to recruit. Great. Well, I'll, I'll wrap things up now. Um, but before I do, Kate, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us to, to talk about the brilliant work that UK Hospitality are doing for its members. Thank you. It's been great to be with you. And, and there's lots and lots of insight, information and tips on our website. Absolutely. Thank you. And Kristen, thank you so much for joining us to talk through the work that you're doing at the Zero Carbon Forum. Thank you. And yeah, and likewise, um, our, our roadmap and our calculator are both available for free through the Zero Carbon Forum website. So we'd absolutely say um, go and have a look and reach out to any of us if, if we can help in any way. There was so much fantastic work shared from both Kate and Kristen there. I personally found it encouraging to see what is being done to help our industry take really practical steps and do our bit for the climate. 
If you're keen to learn more about this episode's topic, you can find links to what we've discussed and more in our show notes. We've also included links to what Bidfood are doing to ensure that we are doing what we can to support our customers to reduce emissions and hit their sustainability targets. If you've enjoyed this episode, please make sure you follow our series on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on so you can be the first to hear our latest episodes. Thank you for listening and until next time, goodbye.